Hi guys, welcome back to another dietitian video. I'm a registered dietitian. If you're new here, I have my own private practice, background in kinesiology, became a dietitian, and here we are. So that is my background. Today we're doing something exciting, our first reaction video to Jillian Michaels' top weight loss mistakes. So she recently uploaded a video, and this is divine timing because I got some requests or suggested video ideas to do on top dieting mistakes that you could be making, how to avoid them, and all of that. We're gonna combine our minds, myself and Jillian. She doesn't know we're doing this, but <laughs> I'll give my advice, we'll see what her advice is, and hopefully set you up for success on your weight loss journey. I honestly don't know too much about like her education background. I know she's a personal trainer, she's best known for her role in The Biggest Loser, so that is what I know about her, and that's her perspective in the context of where she's coming from with her advice. All right, here we go. These are the top two weight loss mistakes I'm willing to bet that you are making if you're watching this video. Number one, you're not counting calories. I don't care what you've read. I don't care what you've been told. I promise you, flat out, you have to watch how much food you're eating when you're trying to lose weight. And people tell me all the time, I'm eating healthy. Okay, so do you need to count calories? Is that a mistake? That's like the first thing people do when they start to try to lose weight is count calories. I agree, you do need to watch what you're eating. That's that's obvious, that's a given. If you're trying to lose weight because you've gained weight, then obviously you need to reassess kind of what your diet looks like. You don't absolutely need to count calories. It works for some people, it's not gonna work for everybody, especially if you have some kind of disordered eating in your past. It can be triggering for that and actually be detrimental to your weight loss journey. You don't need to absolutely count calories. It can be effective tool for some people. So that is my stance on that. As far as eating healthy, it she is kind of right that it's a very arbitrary thing. What I consider to be healthy eating is gonna be different from what Sally considers healthy eating to what Michael considers healthy eating, so it is arbitrary. No, that has nothing to do with weight loss. Weight loss is energy in, energy out, and calories per units of energy, period. So what she's getting at is the energy balance equation, which tends to be something that we all latch onto for dear life. She's right, you do need to be in an energy deficit, a calorie deficit to lose weight. Your body's just not going to start burning fat for no reason. Many people just latch onto that and say all you need to do is be in an energy deficit. You don't need to care about what you're eating. We really need to remember a key thing about this, is that the energy balance equation is a static equation. Energy in energy out. But we need to remember that weight loss is a dynamic process. Say Becky weighs 140 pounds and she wants to lose weight at a rate of one pound a week. So say she's in a deficit of 500 calories. She's losing weight one pound a week. By 140 weeks, she should be at zero pounds. Weight loss is a dynamic process, much more complex than that. Yes, I appreciate the keep it simple method. Calories in, calories out, will lose weight. But if you're in a deficit and you're trying to lose weight, what you eat will affect what you expend. What you expend will affect what you eat. For example, your body will release hunger hormones. Your body will decrease your metabolism. It's a complex process, guys. Second mistake that you're probably making if you're going, nah, -uh, no, I didn't eat as much and I didn't lose weight you're not taking into account the fitness component. Okay, so I just wanna to quickly touch on that before she goes into fitness. It's possible to be in an energy deficit, exercising like crazy, and actually be gaining weight. And this is if you have some kind of hormonal imbalance, everything goes out the window, nothing that she's saying is applying to you. Your body, it's a hormone issue. Your weight gain is related to your hormones being off kilter. If you have a thyroid condition, insulin resistance, PCOS, when you restrict calories, you can actually gain weight. And the more you restrict calories, the more you gain weight because your body moves the goalposts. This is true even if you don't have those conditions, your body will move the goalposts if you're restricting calories too much. And this just means that your body will decrease your metabolism, release hormones that make you more hungry, release hormones that make your fat trapped in their cells. And that's why you see so many people losing weight and then gaining it back when they go on extreme diets. And I believe even with The Biggest Loser, that is a common trend. There's articles about the biggest losers all regaining their weight back because they just focus on the calories, they end up messing up their metabolism in the process. And what happens is there is research to suggest that once you go on a diet that impairs your metabolism, slows it down, you don't fully recover your metabolism back to normal levels once you start 
going back to the way you were eating before. So now your metabolism is slower, you maybe weren't as successful with your weight loss, you plateaued, and now you're more prone to gaining weight because you're now burning less permanently. I'll link this article down below, but basically just says that most of the contestants on The Biggest Loser end up gaining the weight back. So maybe the advice that we're hearing right now is not the best when it comes to sustainability of weight loss. Yes, it might be effective for losing a ton of weight rapidly, but as far as keeping it off, which I think is the gold standard of weight loss, maybe not the best advice. So let's keep listening. So if you're trying to lose weight, it's more like 80% fitness, 20% food. And you might be going, that is just not true, but it is, and here's why. Okay, so before we hear why, I don't really think it's practical or useful information to say you need to be focusing 20% on this, 80% on this, like what are you gonna do with that information? Really, I think it's more subjective to where your starting point is on your weight loss journey and what the lowest hanging fruit is. What area of your life is lacking as far as helping support your weight loss that could give you the biggest return on your investment? Is it exercise or is it nutrition? If you're already starting with a good base of healthy eating, good nutrition, that's supportive of a weight loss environment, but you're not exercising, then obviously if you incorporate exercising into your lifestyle, you're gonna see the biggest improvement as far as weight loss and you're gonna think that the majority of weight loss is coming from your exercise and that would be true for you. So for you, it would seem that it's 80 to 20. But for some people who are already exercising, their diet is complete crap, then they add that diet component, they're gonna see results. Cause let's say Jillian Michaels, I'm Jillian, I wanna lose 20 pounds, right? I'm burning, 1500 calories a day without fitness and now I am on a diet oh my gosh I'm eating 1200 calories a day well I'm still only losing 300 calories a day and if a pound is around 3500 calories that's 12 days for me to lose one pound so of course I'm gonna a couple things one if you're going on a calorie reduced diet don't go below 1200 calories that's pretty much the boundary of what your body needs just to survive. Point number two, that rate of weight loss is acceptable. If you're in a 300 calorie deficit, 300 to 500 is kind of the sweet spot for most people because you wanna be within 10 to 20% of your calorie requirements to make sure that your body isn't triggering hormonal changes, stress response, thinking that you're starving, that you're in a famine, that it needs to hold on to that fat. That's kind of where you wanna be. You don't want to lose more than one to two pounds in a week. That's the upper limit, the sky, because that's when you start to tap into your muscle mass. You can only burn a certain amount of fat at a certain rate per week. Other than that, your body's going to start burning protein and muscle, which goes against losing weight for aesthetic purposes. Less than two weeks to lose one pound, that's completely fine. Everybody's on their own journey. It's slow and steady wins the race. Wouldn't you rather lose a moderate amount of weight that's never coming back or lose weight really quickly, damage your metabolism, skyrocket up the moment you get off your diet. No one else knows you're in this race. No one's setting a time frame on you. You're setting the time on yourself. It's really about developing healthy habits, sustainable habits for weight loss that you can sustain for the rest of your life. You're not aiming for losing weight as quickly as possible. For me to get the weight off, I gotta increase my energy expenditure. I gotta get that 1500 number up to like 3,000, 2,500. So again, back to the point. There's essentially two ways to be in a calorie deficit, exercising or eating less or combining the two, which is where you see the most effective weight loss. Implementing fitness, which I agree with her, is an important component of weight loss and implementing healthy eating while being in a calorie deficit. But to be burning 1,000 calories a day or more from your exercise, you really need to think, is that something that you can sustain long-term? Because that's gonna be something that you have to do for the rest of your life. You're gonna have to be burning that much for the rest of your life. You're gonna have to be training for a marathon for the rest of your life. You're gonna have to be going in the gym for three to five hours, doing hits, doing spin classes, not eating as much, under fueling your body, burning a thousand calories, for the rest of your life. <laughs> I really want you to think about that. If that's sustainable for you, go for it. For most people, that's insane. Story. So when I tell you that weight loss is mostly fitness, you know, you'd see me over the years taking a lot of weight off of people, or even you know, on my website, you see the before and afters for my app and all this stuff. Like they're not just dieting; <laughs> they're working out. I'm literally beating it off people. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Lunges and crunches and all that stuff. So. When it comes to weight maintenance, 
then yeah, it's gonna be like 80 plus percent dyed. Just to her point there, it's a very common misconception to perceive weight loss and weight maintenance as two completely separate things. Whatever you do to lose weight is what you have to do to maintain it. Completely overhaul what you were doing once you reach your goals. Like, no, you have to maintain what you were doing for forever. <laughs> You have to find strategies that are going to work for you. It's going to take time. It's going to take trial and error. You're going to definitely make some missteps. You're going to find strategies that don't work for you. That's fine. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just find a new strategy that you can incorporate into your life to help you reach whatever your goal is. If you want to be successful, you have to find strategies that you can maintain for the long run. We're not talking about health. We're talking about weight. What you eat for health does help with your weight. Certain fats are more apt to be stored as body fat than others. Certain foods are inflammatory, certain foods are anti-inflammatory. When you're eating inflammatory foods that's affecting your guts, that's affecting your mood, your mental health, and your hormones, which in turn affects whether or not you are able to fully tap into your fat stores to burn fat. Two calories and you've got to move. And I, I would give anything to sell you some sort of magic, I don't know what, right? Oh, it's the magic <laughs> device. I, an electrode machine. It's a powder. It's a pill. It's a magic. But it, it's work. It is work. And if you do the work, it's worth it. And I always say work that has a purpose becomes a passion. Work without purpose feels punishing. But if you're feeling lost, or you're feeling confused, or you're feeling defeated, I am betting it is because you are making these two mistakes, and if you correct them, you'll get that scale trending down in the right direction. Let's do some damage control. She's not completely wrong. It is, like, it is work. That being said, you want to work with your body, not against your body. Don't fight your body. Give it the nutrients that it needs. Don't take on such an excessive calorie deficit, an excessive way of exercising, an extreme change that you can't maintain for the rest of your life, don't do that to yourself. Work with your body, find what works for you. Small changes over time beat large changes that just relapse <laughs> any day of the week. Those I don't think are the biggest mistakes. I think the biggest mistake still is in her video, but indirectly if you read between the lines and that is having a dieting mindset. For your weight loss journey, if you're calling it going on a diet, if you're calling it dieting, you're already setting yourself up for failure. When you think about it, the connotation of dieting is temporary, short-term, quick fixes. You have to find long-term changes that you can make in your life. It's a lifestyle change. Change your mindset to a growth mindset where you're adapting, reacting, trial and error, finding what works for you in your life so that you can sustain the changes that you make and all that hard work does not go to waste. If you have any questions, Feel free to DM me on Instagram, post them in the comments below what you found works for you, what strategies you're doing that you find success with so that we can all help each other here, create a community of support. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know your feedback, what you thought, what you agree with, what you disagree with. We're all here to learn to help support each other. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye guys.